All right, so the meeting Wednesday, May 20th. All order. Um, there's no general public comment because there is no general public to comment. Um, we have the minutes of our April 29, 2015 meeting. Uh, there's another tool. There second. I'm staying over here. No second. Okay, second. Um, are there any amendments, corrections? I did correct the starting time. That's why they pay me the big bucks. Um, anything, anything else? I read through them and they seem fair. Um, I think it's great that they were done so quickly. Yes, we are oh, very good. Very good. We are caught up and staying caught up, which is excellent. Um, so, all in favor? All right. So they are adopted. Um, next on the agenda is the chair's report. Um, so I guess the most significant news that I have come across is the. CPC surplus funding that is currently um, going forward. I do not know that the Senate has voted. Um, I think they have three days to debate, actually. And I think the amendment that was offered was 25 million, Sarah, is that right? I believe so. Yeah, so they offered, um, so they were saying 25 million out of the surplus. The House had voted 10. So assuming that the um, amendment goes forward in the Senate and has 27 co-sponsors, so it should, um, then it would go to conference, and then of course the governor would have the ability to veto it, which would have to be overridden. So, but at least it seems like some additional money will be um, eventually awarded, and again, assuming that there's a surplus to award from, that would mean a higher match for us. So. Um, and in other news, uh, I thought it might be interesting to the members of the committee that after our very respectful, very thoughtful debate on the issue of the uh, Christmas tree that it received um, not a single comment at City Council, and then um, Fred Contrada and the Republican saw fit to report it um, as as our ducking, how we, we either ducked, we ducked the issue or we, we, yeah, I'll, I'll pull up the exact, exact words, but yes, he, he reported that we basically, we, we tried to keep it from being, Good job. we punted. So I thought, hmm, I wonder what meeting he watched, but so, um, again, after all of our consideration of it, it was reported as us trying to avoid the issue, which was interesting. Um, the next item on the agenda is the round one uh, debriefing. So suggestions for the next round. Again, every round is somewhat different, though we have, I think, established a pattern of doing the ranking sheets. Um, again, depending on the round, we have either weighed in before the ranking sheets with sort of our flagging of issues that are important to us um, and making decisions and the ranking sheets have come back and then we've gone through our sort of provisional votes and then we've come up with conditions and then we've done our final votes and then we've done our final drafting of contracts. So I don't know what anyone, whether anyone had strong thoughts about this last round and what might be approved going forward. And of course, since we have the plan to revise this summer, it would be good if we want to make some things to write them down. So. I, I raised the question earlier, I think, about what there ought to be a time limit on the presentation of the proposals. I mean, obviously, if, you, if we have questions and extend it, uh, it shouldn't count against the person, but um, it might help focus some of the presentations if we were to do that. I don't, I don't mean a five-minute time limit, but minutes perhaps. Mm -hmm. I think that's 
probably have the time for some of them today because they have the opportunity in writing as well. I think that's I think that's fair. Did to, I'm sorry, to hear all no each individual the the, the proponent of the particular proposal. Yeah. I I in general certainly agree with that. There there are times when we have such like for I mean classic examples when we get the kids in here supporting school projects when it would it's frankly um, it's not too burdensome to hear them. I'm not, I'm not talking about the um, the public support part of it, oh, but okay. the actual presentation okay. by the proponent. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I look like so. The so when <laughs> the public so the public proponent can um, take 15 minutes, but then if there's additional community big support, then they can add. Sure. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. And that would not include our question and answer, correct? That's right. And we could list it as a general recommendation to compare your remarks to yes. stay within a certain time period. Maybe a little bit by a minute or two. Yeah, I don't think we'll turn off the microphone. I agree there are some times where right, well, we get an hour presentation of something that probably could have been summarized much more quickly. We're talking about the people that are presenting projects. Right. Yes. Yeah, so haven't you met with them before they come before us? Yes. Yeah, I, think, I think that's where, you know, you, I mean, what I'm really interested in is the public, um, you know, the public comment around it. Sometimes I confess to you, I'm, I'm impatient with some of those if, if a single person sort of takes on and I look to you, you know, for <laughs> you know, in vain. And I, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, bad behavior on Deb's part, so noted. But, um, but I think that the, the place to get the, applicants in the right frame of mind is when Sarah meets with them and say, you know, it would be a very good idea if you didn't take more than so long time. Well, and I do say that. So I bet you do. Very enthusiastic. But <laughs> if we have it sort of in our in our procedure, then there then it doesn't leave the chair looking like he's being the heavy, but we put it out there and right. it's, it's easier to enforce. That so one, one consideration that I have is that a lot of times I feel like that's their opportunity to actually reach the community. And you know, that, so it's, if they are trying to enlist support, that's, it's important for them to have the ability to present. So, I mean, I, I agree that having a hard time limit would force them to make choices about what information they want to present. But I would hope that we give them, so here's the thing, we need to give them, Sarah always puts time bars time bars and they usually run 15 or 20 minutes so they already know if they've looked at the agenda that the guideline is 20 minutes um, and but I wouldn't want necessarily to limit someone let's say to, if I if you limit someone to 15 minutes and the presentation is really important um, I, I don't know it, it seems like it seems like there's some flexibility, especially if we start to have a back and forth over a particular issue. I mean, again, it's we might consume we might consume most of their time over something that we consider important, but they didn't get to educate us about a you know, potential impact, or they didn't get to educate the public about a potential benefit to the community. So that's my only that did occur to me. argument for sort of allowing it to be more free flowing. Though I agree, there are some presentations it's duplicative. And it's, it's, then maybe it's a, maybe it is a matter of saying you know, we ask that you try to limit two, and then at the start of the meet at the, of the meeting, and then the chair would have the pleasure if it really seemed to be duplicative to invoke. Mm -hmm. But sort of putting it out there sort of gives the ground rules and then gives you the yeah. opportunity to. Right. Know, everybody line. else is sitting there going. Right, right. So I, I, I stay remember. awake until my time, and, and it's you know. It's right. I mean, honestly, I actually feel like that the it's almost for me as much consideration of the public support part of the meeting because I feel like with public support meeting that a project if a project takes all the oxygen out of the room almost literally by having 50 people who 
other people leave, right? They, they're, they're the supporters of the project that just drew the short straw mm -hmm. and are at the end of the agenda, then they, you know, it doesn't appear they have the public support because three of five of their supporters have left. And at the same time, all we've heard is the same, you know, same thing from 25 people. I like this project, I like this project, I like this project, I like this project. And again, you know, the numbers are important, but it's they're not the only thing. And then they can, I think also the fact that we talked about this before, the the number of people that show up in the room may or may not be a representative sample. So. I think it's not that, you know, you just keep in the back of your mind, they bother to come, they care. No, it's true. <clears throat> it's true. But there are a lot of, like, political minorities in right. the group that are very motivated, and but I wouldn't necessarily say that's the, you know, that they've got the best arguments. But well, there may be alternate ways to do it for public uh, opinion. Right. You know, take a poll of the people who are here and ask who wants to speak to which projects and so that everyone knows and we can figure out do we want to hear the ones that have one or two first and everyone else waits. Right. right. Mm -hmm. so, right. Now, which is preferable, but I mean, that might be at least the people know how long they may have to wait. Yeah, and, and I've tried to do that before um, and move, you know, jump people if there's only a few. But then it gets, it gets it's, you know, because people don't wear, maybe if we color coded everyone and said, you know, Take a tag because sometimes I'll miss on. I'll say I'll look over and I'll see a group of people and think, oh, they're attached to project number three, and I'll call them up, but actually they're attached to project number two. So it's it's a. Yeah. So we could do a sign up sheet and not say when you're going to go, but you can, and then you can look at to see who signed up for what. You can make a guess that way. Well, well, I, I like the idea that it should be your discretion and. The guidelines of 15 minutes, that's, that's great. Yeah. But there can be times when there aren't that many applicants, and so going running long is fine. There are other times you've got really busy nights, <coughs> so it's not fine to drone on. I'm in favor of endless time for second graders. I just am a sucker. <laughs> I'm a sucker for that. It was just so sweet. Um, and I also know I work with kids are. all day, so I, 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 I could listen to that all night long. Um, but the, then the, uh, the when when those two good housing projects on Pleasant Street were being uh, debated here, we we were throwing questions at those folks mm -hmm. in the Pride Center, yeah. and that turned their presentation into much it's longer right. presentations. I don't like being, you know, I don't want to have somebody say you can't ask questions. I want to ask questions. So. Right. Um, uh, at that point, what they what may have been a 15 minute presentation turned into a year and a half hour um, because we were asking questions. So I think your discretion in running a, a tight ship is, is uh, trusted and, you know. Well, I mean, I guess we could. But give them guidelines of 15 minutes, yeah. For, I mean, I, I also feel like 15 minutes is too short for some of the more complex projects we have. I mean, we can debate how long, but maybe the thing is to say. <coughs> Your prepared remarks should go for no right. longer than this amount of yeah. time. Yeah, that's really what I'm saying. Yeah, that's that's the questions, yeah. That, yeah. Right. The the questions and the back and forth yeah. is, is all obviously necessary because people are asking questions. That's so, Sarah, do remarks. you communicate the time bars to them? I do. Okay. So, so, I mean, as long as they know in advance and we told them that they should be prepared and then that they potentially will be limited. And again, they can submit whatever they else they need to see. Right. Well, I was just going to say, even then, I think it should be at Sarah's and the chair's discretion, because clearly Lone Park could not go 15 minutes. Right. And we expect the evening, they had to go an hour. I mean, they, they just had to. So. Right. And I do make some of them shorter. Like when Wayne comes in for the conservation right. fund, it's the yeah. same thing every time. So it's right. 10 at the most. And Pulaski Park, I think they get 10 times. But it's just a like, So taking control um, is important because it does make our meetings more efficient and makes everyone happier. So we know. Just as one talking about you know the rules of the road, uh, it helps me as soon as we can to get the schedule of the round. Mm -hmm. you, you do, and I just I actually use that in ways you wouldn't think. Mm -hmm. I know that we've discussed it, and sometimes, sometimes not, but when it comes time to do 
ranking sheets. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could develop the template ranking sheet to put in the plan so we always have the same one, but sometimes it's just a ranking sheet, sometimes it's a ranking sheet and we include a comment column. Sometimes we wanted to do add your conditions at that stage, the add condition column. And then other times we had the actually send out the list of the criteria for each of the categories and their general categories. If we can keep that consistent from around the round, we would be more prone to consult those things and add them as opposed to being crammed at the end of the conditions. Okay. So we should have a decision week package. Not a week package, but <laughs> decision strong. Exactly. A strong decision package. Um, did it anyone would, have it would be a great research project for some graduate student to go back through all of the projects and Did anyone, um, so I thought about this, uh, so we had, a, we had a peculiar round, I don't know whether, it, well it may occur again because we have, um, because we will have an impact on the amount of money we will have to spend, but I think that we went into this round thinking that because we knew and it had been disseminated that we had spent well more than our usual allotment that the public might not come with relatively large projects, which was not the case. Even one of the applicants who had a relatively large ward came in with a relatively, you know, I don't think you could call $70,000 a small application. So that left us in a position where we turned down quite a few projects. Um, and just, I was wondering whether when we do, or if we do something like we did where we awarded more than half, which was exceptional, but again, it may, it may come up in future rounds, whether we wanted to pass on some interim guidance for the second round. So just saying, you know, this is the second round, um, we are limited, you might be advised to apply in the next fiscal year um, because our funds are largely expended. And thank you for remembering that, I because I was feeling quite uncomfortable Right. I mean, we turned down some projects that were pretty good projects that in other, you know, other yes. times might have gotten at least partial funding, and we set a flat. And the amount no. of effort that went into it and right. the rallying the troops I, and right. you know, right. hours spent here, and I wasn't always convinced that they really knew what we had in our, in our I, hands. I, I, I did communicate that. I'm so sure you did. Yeah. <laughs> but so everybody made a decision, like, I just want to go for it. There were a number right. of projects right. that said, gee, I think I'll wait. It's not really time sensitive. No, I, I can do it next time. But everybody yeah. knew what they were getting into. Yeah. I, I wonder if all the people in the public, though, who came to speak on behalf of the projects that they knew as well. No, and, most likely. And so I'm, I'm wondering about a turn to the chair, maybe. some kind of public no, some, yeah. announcement presentation as well to reinforce it to make sure that everybody is participating. Is, is there a downside, though? I mean, you, I agree that to rally the troops and bring the public in, but I think sometimes the point is I want my I want my public say about this, knowing that it's not going to go this time. They'll bring it back next time. Well, is that's there fine a, if they want to do it? I just wasn't always sure that they really understood. Maybe they missed it and it yeah. needed repeating. I don't know. I I mean, I, I came out of that first round thinking that we had voted not to have projects during the second part, and that we were knew we knew last year would be coming back because that was their intent, and that we were holding over the 180 to determine whether or not we were going to give them that as a down payment. So I was surprised when we had these. I think maybe we've got two questions, which is one, you know, when we get to revising the plan, should we specifically say that we reserve the right? during any year to limit it to one round or no rounds, depending on what our fiscal situation is. And two, if we do have the carryover, how do we communicate, as you were saying, to the applicants ahead of time? So hearing you know, what everybody said, I 
my recollection of that debate was that we did consider saying we're not going to have a round, but then, at least again, my reflection, which may not be accurate, was that the decision was to go forward and schedule the round because it was possible you would have an extraordinary project that would merit being funded. Um, but again, I don't know that, that that didn't go into our plan. That didn't necessarily, we didn't say, this is an extraordinary funding round where you have to be extra double special in order to even be considered. Um, and so, and, and so, yeah, people take their shot, but I also hear that it may not be easy to get people to come out to two or three public meetings. And, and, and I do feel that that's, um, it, it does, like that futility, I, you know, I hear from, you know, I hear from some applicants and they say, they don't really understand. They're like, well, but, you know, even like, couldn't partial funding have happened? Um, I did have a conversation with Look Park um, when we didn't fund the restoration, and I actually, they actually, I told them about the circumstances for this round, and they said, that's fine, like, we'll aim for the fall. Um, but that was a conversation that I had with that applicant. And, but I, I agree with what you're saying, is that the, the plan, we went from having three rounds to two rounds, because three rounds was seen as excessive. Um, and and if, I don't know whether the situation would be that you would say, if you, you know, that the committee could be in the plan that the committee could have one round and then you could still allow expedited applications. So if you thought it was basically good enough that it merited an expedited review, then you could come in. But otherwise, you might not have people um, spend the time coming through with an application. But that's something I think that we can talk about further as we go to the review of the plan. So. You know, because again, it's, it's, uh, I always think about um, like the community garden up at River Run and how that was a compelling application with some committed people behind it. They had one very difficult issue, which I don't know, Sarah, whether there's any been further conversation or whether there's, if that's you know, moved anywhere, but I felt like for a lot of them, after having come in and spoken, that they might never come back, right? Even, even for partial funding. Again, with a good project, you'd like to see them try to negotiate the difficulty and then come back to us. But not everybody likes going to public meetings as much as we do. <laughs> uh, so anything else? So we have time control, funding, limitations, and whether or not we're going to modify rounds or advertise rounds differently. Process and Dave's package. Decision package. It sounds like a military thing. Um, anything else? All right. Well, if you do think of something, send Sarah an email. We'll try to fold it into the the plan revisions. And now the next item on the agenda is the small projects discussion. So, Dave, we received. And I apologize for. Did you send that out, sir? I did not know. The picture's not right there. Okay. So the intent was for you to have read it in advance, but now <laughs> you have a chance to read it. So, can I request to the chair? We can give them some silent time to finally yes, read it. Absolutely. And with the knowledge that we're not making any decisions tonight, yep. so you don't have to vote and you can have time to digest it even after this meeting. So the idea here was to uh, basically try to convert our prior conversations into something a little bit more digestible. And so I wrote up the first thing as basically a draft section for the revised plan, which if you're considering a small grant, you would encounter and this would explain the purpose and uh, the parameters. Then there's attached to it a combined eligibility and application form, which is basically a nod towards something that might be more efficient and desirable for the small project. And then at the end is 
um, chart that we've gone through during a PowerPoint presentation. Some of you are not here for that. Um, but basically going through our eligibility um, chart and then uh, an effort to go through based on prior projects that have been done throughout towns all over Massachusetts and trying to figure out what categories have been funded through those and thinking about the pros and cons and you'll see that we kind of limited it to two sets. Obviously we can talk about everything in here, but I want to give you something to chew on. Reading, if you could please look up so that the teacher knows you completed the exercise.
Dave, on the, on the last page, the, what's red is circled? Yes. So it's going to preserve and rehab the store. So what I was envisioning is that we would have a, you know, the initial kickoff meeting that we have at the beginning of the round. We would already have had the applications. We would do presentations by those individuals or entities who submitted them, short presentations, so that we could ask any questions that we might have. The idea being that these projects should be self-explanatory when they come in so they wouldn't need a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And then a question would be there might be some where we need a site visit we have additional questions or we're sending back for homework, which is why I put in language to say, to the extent you can make decisions, you'd want to do it. And yeah, so it's the, the intent would be something easy, smaller, less complicated, less time commitment for an applicant for something that is concrete and digestible. But there are tons of different ways to go about that. And so I tried to memorialize our discussions to at least give us something that you want to talk about. I honestly, um, I think I was one of the ones who, well, separating the award from the city council might be more difficult, but as someone who applies frequently for small grants um, to any number of funding organizations, you, you, can, you can't go to a meeting for each one, you know, and, and basically I, I would think that by trying to do this up front and give them an, an indication in a single meeting, I wouldn't, I wouldn't envision that they would have to make a presentation. Anything, the application is the application. I mean, I just, you know, you can make, I mean, a lot of, lots of, most grants I would think don't have it in person, you don't meet with the board. So it's all done by paper. And then if they want to show evidence of public support, they should have a package of letters and obviously, form letters will be treated like form letters and considered as such. But you know, half a dozen letters from different people in the neighborhood talking about the reason that this bird box project is important to them and they're bird watching in the neighborhood that would seem adequate. And that, you know, without those people having to show up, because if they only need $150 for building materials to have the you know the group of people put together the bird boxes them up to conservation land, then they're not going to spend, they're not going to spend 25 person hours to do that. So if you were to do it that way, and that actually yeah, makes lots of sense, would you still want them, the applicants, to be available during that meeting for Q&As if people have questions? I, I don't see a compelling 
reason. Again, I mean, I think the idea is we've tried, we've we've talked about, and again, just looking at looking at the last round where it was the city was the successful <laughs> applicant in one guise or another. Um, we've talked about trying to make this process extended out to groups that are not served as often. I mean, we're we're lowering the barrier to entry that way, but again, the amount of money that we're awarding, I think, should be less. I mean, just my other comment would be, the 49.99 was the was the threshold amount, right, dictated for contracting purposes. I wouldn't be averse to setting it, at least for the beginning, to setting it low enough so that we really are capturing some of these smaller projects. We don't have people trying to sort of skate that middle ground between project that, you know, a five thousand dollar power, four thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollar project is still pretty that's an amount of money that if I'm a taxpayer, I I don't see that as de minimis. Well it's also something that is big enough to demand some organization and Oh right, right, to pull it off. Absolutely. That maybe I, I'm with you in that regard. I don't think it's a I wish there were a way not to set the cap, but we must. I think we'll get it in. Right. But um I, I really like the idea of drawing people in for a smaller category of, and, and involving more people in the community. Uh, and your idea of doing it as a paper-only exercise is very appealing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that piggybacks on what we've just been talking about on enticing people in. Let's be very clear up front that you know we've got a small category that we treat just based on a standalone. Tell us what we need to know. Anything gets complicated once you start to think about it. I think that's why probably why the committee's been thinking about this for years. So, um, may just be the funding round that I have experienced, but part of the limitation in those rounds, part of the decision making was there's not enough money to fund everything, mm -hmm. so you have to make choices. If there's no limit on the number of these. How are we making them? You know, if, there, if there isn't this, or, or maybe there's been some discussion about setting aside a certain amount of money for small grants, but if you don't have any funding limitation, you could have 50 s small grants, and then I'd how love are you to trying have that to problem? I'd love to have that problem. We're not, you know, if we did have that problem, we'll change our process, but it will, it won't. I don't think it would pop up on us. I think it would, if that happened. You know, I, I hear your point exactly. We're we're actually prioritizing with preference these in front of the other projects. The way we're talking about doing it. All right. We did have a discussion. I was actually at the point of setting aside a certain amount mm -hmm. either at the beginning of the year, or, you know, and so we did set it aside each year. And the consensus was that folks didn't want to do that. I'm not sure there were a variety of reasons. I'm not sure that I could articulate them all. Um, but I think it's worth revisiting if we think that's worthwhile. I think the concern about doing that was from round to round, right, you might actually reserve too much. And then as can you use it later? Yeah. We'd yeah. have to deal with the yeah. tool. But again, that's yeah. a matter of everything has its issues. It's a lot, that's a live issue worth considering. But, but Dave, you have an alternative scenario, which is that at the first meeting, we make a tentative recommendation, and we finalize it at the close when we're closing the funding round, correct? Right. And so the, the issues there were twofold. One had to do with the money factor, which is we might have a, you know, we don't necessarily want to spend on small projects if we have a big one that's more demanding, deserving, or what have you, rather than the budget. The other was whether or not could get the city council to act on this separate small ground and to, based on my discussion with Cumber, they didn't have any problem and that would be fine, but you know, we would have to do that especially. And I don't know whether or not they would need any new procedure to do that or they welcome that at any time now. Do you have any discussions? Um, I have not. Um, so, you know, it's Again, I think it would depend on the total amount of the grants um, that we were planning, you know, planning to give. I'm just, this, you know, reminds me very much of the NEF small grant procedure 
um, and they give anywhere from fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars has sort of been their range. Um, their their maximum grant amount is three thousand. They do it in two. They do it in two rounds, and then they have actually a process for expedited, but they limit up to a thousand. Um, so, and it's you know very much set up as Dave says. Um, and again, you know, Lynn, to your point, it's. When you have a small grant, since you're not going to get that much money, people really, you know, people really, even though the money's there and every teacher in the building could write a grant, it's, it's, people just don't do it because it's not time efficient. They're too pressed. And, so. and, and that may be, that may be right. I'll tell you what was sort of behind my concern is I was thinking more about the um, Union Street condominiums jail project and there the question was raised about private property right um, and uh, I think there was a, a lot of concern about whether there was sufficient public use mm -hmm. looking at all the I had looked at all the criteria b before the discussion about that project and an awful lot of the criteria I think that project satisfied mm -hmm. I could see there's a, there are an awful lot of historic properties in, um, in in this city, and you know if I could get four thousand dollars to help with my fence, my painting, my exterior, whatever. Right. And and how are we going to not have this be a way to subsidize so, so it? Yeah. Well, that was where I was looking just at what Dave said about it. And I guess this would have to be something that, like, I, I think if you said, I want $2,000 to redo the porch on this 1884, you know, Queen Anne, then I, I think you potentially call, I mean, again, they could submit it, but I think that the committee could say that really is a segmenting of the project because you know, you've got the porch then we also have the windows are in the same state. Now that requires more investigation on our part um, as to whether or not it's really being segmented. Um, but in that case, it literally doesn't stand alone. So if you had, right, if you're if you're actually doing part of the building, then I don't know if that's what, at least my conception of these were. My conception is where they're done, they're delivered, um, they're not connected to some other restoration project, some other. Jail was only talking about the steps. Well, you're done. I guess, but what, one of my thoughts, you know, when I was in the jail was the steps, but then the whole building has been under this, right, was under the same sort of management, so you couldn't really tell because they hadn't done a full assessment. So, um, I mean, I guess, I guess it, it's never going to be, um, there are always going to be attempts, I would think, to, try to just get that first little bit of money or that emergency money. Um, but I guess it would be up to the committee to try to um, to try to discern where that's happening. And again, that could be one thing where you try to make the project list. Basically say, we're not going to allow improve, you know, a restoration of real property. We think that that's one that is going to typically be part of the project that's going to go deeper. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I really like the idea of the, of the peace project. I like, I like the idea of reaching out to more people and having it be available more broadly to the community. I'm just concerned that we'll be left without sufficient, wondering how to make our decisions, mm -hmm. and, you know, how to say no to some and yes to others, and whether we've really got enough guidance to, to feel comfortable making those decisions. I, I don't know. It's, I think part of that, Chan, and, and it's a valid point, is the thing that I struggled with trying to come up with these parameters. We had, you know, the last meeting we had, we had certain elements of our committee saying, I don't think we should have any restrictions. It should be open to anybody. And, you know, I knew these categories should, should be fine and they should apply. And as I went through that chart, you know, do we really want to entertain real property acquisitions that involve deed restrictions, which involve consequences and land management and all the other things that go along with it and the butters and you know for something so small doesn't seem worthwhile and the same for support of 
individuals for community housing. We haven't had that application, but just like someone doing their porch, if anyone who was in need of assistance saw this and came in and said, I need 150 bucks, what would be our criteria? And so that's on the list because it's a case of first impression. I think it, it's worthwhile considering whether or not for historic rehabilitation, if it's a residence or if it's a private property that we limit it to, you know, it could be limited to municipal buildings or buildings that have a public use component or that have been recognized for something and that are visible, you know, that might that be a way to restrict it. Actually, I think that would resolve my concern if we, if we, because I think that's the, the one door that I'm concerned about opening. The rest of the door is right. fine for people to come in. And, and if that particular issue is a larger one, which I think it is, we could consider addressing it in the, the larger CPA plan as well. The, the, the committee won't accept applications for certain types of preservation projects. Or, or we'll well, favor I'm not, I'm not sure I'm there on the larger preservation <coughs> projects, but I, I'm concerned about it for the smaller. The, the point of this is to encourage small grants and to make it less scary, correct? Mm -hmm. How, I, I don't know what the, I can't remember what the real application form or the regular application form, is this substantially different? Like uh, much, much easier to fill out? I, well, one efficiency is that they don't have to go through two forms and two sets of meetings. The other is that in terms of the information they have to consider, a bunch of stuff that related to real property acquisition and lots of mumbo jumbo that if it was left in there it would be it would probably turn anybody off. So the application, and again this was based on people's preferences the last time we met, was to keep the application open and let them write whatever they want. As opposed to limiting it to a certain number of characters or limiting it to certain answer certain questions, but to keep it open. So I left it open and tried to keep enough of the criteria from the long application so that we would get useful information. So it's a little bit different, but not hugely different. The, the, the larger difference is probably no site visits, no public appearances, no having to you know come in for questions and answer, have it all done in one lump sum after submitting one application. So, say those three things again. So that's the big difference. The, app the application itself is not a big deal. So they don't have to show up. We don't have to go there. And we can do it in one meeting. Potentially, yeah. So the way <clears throat> this arose for me when I was actually doing my registration for my, uh, when I was running to, to get on the ballot, I went in and I was talking to the clerk. And you know, I know that we've given money to the clerk's office to do archiving of records, and there are some issues regarding you know the, either the quality or the size of the things that they purchase. But her reality is, you know, I work all day. I need two grand to buy envelopes to archive it and have archival boxes. Why do I have to go through a four-month process? Why do I have to come after hours to tons of meetings? This is so simple. Here are the records. They describe the records. Here's what we need to do can't we have a process that encourages those types of projects? And I think that that's a reasonable thing to request. So uh, without taking out, I mean, they still have to meet our criteria. We still have to provide some form for them to give us the information. This was the best I could come up with, given the limitations that, were kind of, that we discussed in prior meeting. But I'm open to suggestions on how to either streamline it more or make it more robust to satisfy them. Is the purpose, what is our purpose or our goal tonight? Is it to wordsmith this to begin the discussion? And what, what's the process? The last meeting we said we were going to start the process now and that our next meeting hopefully we'll be able to vote on it. So I can take back any feedback and refurbish it and have Sarah send it out for your review prior to the next meeting. And that, that was the timeline we set. I have one thought on the process. Mm -hmm. I like your idea of considering it up front and then uh, hearing the other projects and then treating it just like a project. I think that simplifies our relationship with the council 
I don't think these are going to be expedited type projects, so the fact that they would wait to be in the larger consideration with all the other projects feels fine to me, and I just think it would it wouldn't look like we were doing something really different. I mean, I think my goal here is I'd just love for you know the high school to get together and propose you know one club there to propose something that I could really get behind. It, it really is. I just it's got opportunity written on it for me is what I hope it comes about. But I don't think we ought to craft a whole separate. I mean, I like what you're doing, and it does call for a separate you know separate process. But as much as we can, I'd like to keep it within what we what we typically do with <coughs> And I think that means that we're, that, that doesn't mean that we're giving it a separate consideration. It means that we heard it up front because it's small and we, we wanted to hear them up front, but we're going to vote on them when we see the rest of the projects and put them all to the city council in the same batch. So in terms of um, our previous discussion, we had a number of topics that we had discussed and, and just to maybe to make use of this time, the first, um, the first one was the application form. So that was the first question was, should the application form be the same? Should it be different? Do we want to request more information since it's a paper application? Less, you know, less information because it's a less sophisticated applicant. Um, do we want to make it less scary by printing it on colored paper and putting unicorns instead of the city seal. I mean, what? how do we want to change it or do we want to change it all? So I guess if we have some, if we can sort of have a straw poll as to where we want to go because that was what we were trying to get to at this meeting was if we're tasking Dave with coming up with a more final draft, we wanted to give him a direction. And so he's given us a starting point with this application. Um, it's similar in some ways and has some slight modifications, but does anyone have a sense of? It looks very similar, but, but the cover sheet is pretty much the same. Yeah. I mean, I basically merged the eligibility and the application form. Right. The right. only real differences are at the place that said use additional paper if you need to. Right. I limited the project purpose to match what's on that eligibility chart mm -hmm. so that it's consistent with what's in currently in the guidance. Um, there's the not to exceed numbers, assuming that folks want to go in that direction. And then the only substantive changes really for the CPC use, like put a, you know, the eligible, not eligible, so you can make that decision up front. And then the check for it's appropriate for the processor is something that warrants a fuller discussion. And then, and then the, it, I mean, you, you'll have to go home and look, but the application instructions are where there's a difference. It's just a smaller, less verbose, you know, and what it does basically is it takes account that we're not looking at um, preservation and we're not looking at acquisition. Mm -hmm. And so it removes all those complex terms. So there's not a huge change, and it's one instead of two. And I'm sorry, it's, it's what? It's one form instead of two forms. But it would still go to you, Sarah, and yeah. Downey so, for, for initial review. Maybe one way to simplify that is in the instructions to say that you must contact um, staff first, because I think there's more propensity here for someone who has a completely ineligible project to fill this out and hand it in and expect a mm -hmm. great response, and it just doesn't, it doesn't qualify for CBA funds at all. And that would take out some of the you know, eligibility stuff and make it a little shorter. Yeah. Um, yes, so do you still need to, I mean, unless we change our plans to suggest otherwise, the chair and you need to decide on eligibility. And yeah, that, that was still Well, though, though I, I mean, we, we decide on eligibility if we think it's absolutely clear, but we always bring it to the full committee anything is I mean, if, it, if it's if there's if no reasonable person could read the statute as saying you can do this then we don't then we say it's not eligible but if it's even close we always bring it to the committee because it's not our power to decide that I mean it's I would, I would require them to talk to staff and then again 
I'm imagining that we would want to circulate these before the meeting, right? Yeah. We don't want to get these at the meeting and be making decisions right no. there. We want to get, right, we want to get this far enough to advance the meeting, which means the deadline has to be far enough in advance of the meeting right. so that we have some time to make decisions. And well, if, if we're not going to make a final decision until the end of the funding cycle, then I mean, that's, that's what I don't understand. What, if one of the purpose of this is, let's go back to the clerk who wants, you know, 2,000 envelopes. If we have it at the start of the funding cycle, but we're not going to finalize it to the end, they're requesting envelopes at the end of August, and we're not going to give it to them at the end of well, December. Well, part of the I think part of the logic for making the decision up front, even though it would still be clear to the applicant that you get your money at the end, would be that we then, this affects, like we make the decision that that affects the amount of money that we have available for other projects. Whereas if we postponed it until the end, then we would basically spend out on all the big projects and then we'd say, oh, nothing left for the little ones. And so the idea was that you consider them up front, you know, you commit some amount of money up front and then you get to the consideration of the other ones later. Just because, again, that I thought I heard people say that they thought that the consideration of the small ones might be drowned out. You know, they might just, be. and people might also, people might also think when they submit their application, well, my kindling application for a couple signs that say, you know, this is an important historical, right? This would be historic. You could do, you know, plaques. Well, I want five hundred dollars for plaques, but they're not going to give me that because they're building a new park. So again, I think this is as much about the psychology of the applicants as it is about our process. It's trying to represent to them that we're going to take them seriously. So that's was one of the reasons for trying to move it to separate it at least. Well, and my comment about not separating it was really worrying about whether the council would be confused by what we're doing. So I guess we could address that by if we bring one, like again, we consider it up front, but then it's the same way as before. Our recommendations go as a package at the end, so that they're not confused. But I, I, I guess I have questions. If we're trying to make this as easy and accessible for small uh, projects, why should we make them wait four months to get funded? September, October, November, December, correct? I mean, if we're gonna, it, it seems like if our intent is to, is to make this as easy as possible, is there a way to expedite that and go to city council twice? Or they don't submit until November 15th or something, I, I, I don't know. It just seems to make them wait four months for $200. I will say that the counselors I've spoken to have all been supportive of the small grant and getting people engaged. And they've not, and I have not spoken to all of them, but the ones I've spoken to feel like it would certainly be worth their while to entertain something out of our traditional cycle if it promotes citizen engagement. So that, it might be worth having that discussion with them before we make this yeah. decision. Though, I mean, they were not. We went from three, you know, from three rounds to two rounds. Nobody asked council whether it was okay with them. I mean, the way the statute's written, we make recommendations, and when the recommendations arrive, they have to take action. So, you know, I, I don't think as long as they're, as long as they're convinced of our, that our process is still good. When you say easy, like, I'm, you know, my emphasis would be easy to apply, not easy to get. Right? It's not like, oh yeah, five hundred dollars for you, and five hundred for you, and five hundred for you. But it's just that. Um, you know, we'll still again apply that it has to have public benefit, but it's just we're going to try to encourage people by um, making the application simple, but not. Um, so the application is in the right direction. Is that um, the amount? The amount is four thousand nine hundred ninety-nine or less. Do we wish to consciously lower the amount below four thousand nine hundred ninety-nine? And again, the rationale for five thousand was it doesn't have to go out to bid. Is that? Uh, it doesn't need a contract. Anything mm -hmm. above five thousand or above, we would have to sign a contract with the applicant, which is pretty onerous for just a couple of people. So, just going back to the application, I'm, I'm, 
I guess I'm in favor of just being explicit about stuff. I know this says a brief description of the project as a project summary, but the questions about the narrative are, are pretty extensive. So if we're really trying to make it easy to somebody to say, normally don't exceed, we would not expect you to have to exceed two pages and, unless there's something. Something to give them some sense that we don't want them, you know, to do a thesis for us. So we really want them to, if it's not so fairly short. Well, and again, this is, we had competing views. We had Joe on one hand <laughs> said they should provide us everything that anyone else would provide. Right. And we had other people saying, I want a brief. And I don't know how to reconcile those two views and we're left to this, this topic. I'm open to any suggestion you have. Okay. I mean, maybe say this is your opportunity to make a convincing argument in the shortest space as possible. So please answer the following questions. From what I know about people who are beginners, this is extremely daunting. Having a sheet where you have these questions with blanks below them, that's doable. So if you just say give a project summary and on a different page you say answer these questions, it, it, it flips people out because they're not sure how it's organized, they've never written a grant before. Whereas if you just say, this is what the information you need to provide, then they'll say, oh, I know where it's located. I know the address and parcel number and they can fill it in. So I think that that would help guide them. But you still think it's advisable to have a space where they actually describe what they want to do? Or do we have a bank that says, please describe what you want to do? Um, you can have the first, you know, the first blank general project description, and then again have all the information there. You may end up, you know, changing the presentation. I just don't think that people, again, ed editing it is, is something that a lot of people are not going to want to do or be comfortable with or know exactly where they should start. So, I mean, you could have general project description at the end. And then if they haven't put the information in one of these, then they would. Because again, what we want in a general project description is usually this information. So I would guide it that way. What's the status of past project applications? Is there a record of those? Yeah. Yeah. We, we keep one hard copy of each, and they're all online. The online was what I was looking for. So eventually, we'll be able to point to people, this is what this kind of looks like. I mean, we could even do a sample one, but I hate to do a sample that gives some indication of what we might find right. or not. So that I mean, I, I foresee us doing our own publicity about these in the beginning and, and trying to bring through some of the projects we think have possibility of fitting. You know, I mean, it, these are, these are going to have to, it's, it's kind of like a startup process. We're going to have to work at getting them in. So, Sarah, if I rearrange this application, I'm not a pro with Microsoft Word in terms of text boxes. Just being an attorney to figure out how to create a text box for the budget. Um, what would be nice is if we had one of those text boxes that's expandable, so that they needed to take more space than what's there. Okay. Yeah, it does it. I just don't know how to do that. We need to work together on that. Sure. Okay. Got other folks in favor of Downey's suggestion to do it as Q&A? Yeah, I like that. I, like that. Yeah, I, I might suggest just yeah, narrative description at the end. And yeah. See if, and if they want to add that at the end. Yeah. Any additional information feels important. Yeah. So is the amount I originally, when I was drawing this up, thought 2,500 was a good starting place. We had Maureen come in and say, I think $20,000 would be a good starting place. And then we had 5,000 as a break point for contract. And I feel like we partly ended up there as compromise for people who wanted bigger and people who wanted smaller. So my concern about 5,000 is just that cumulatively, if we get a number of projects, it's a lot of money and it's Again, the first time we're doing this, it might be better to stick with smaller money, assuming that smaller money equates to smaller project and keep it caged. And then if we want to expand it over time to more money, we can. But that was my point. I would actually 
actually do it live. I, I reserve the right to change my mind frequently during the course of the meeting. So I might actually go the other way if there really is going to be some difficulty in engendering enthusiasm and willingness to go through this process. You can always change it if you find that it's too high. But if, if there's concern about making it worth people's while to go start going through this process and make it you know, enough, of, enough of a goodie for them to, to be willing to do that, you might try it at just under 5,000 and see what happens. And if, it, if it's wildly successful, you can cut it back. Yeah, I mean, it could slide either way. So, um, so Dave, you, you had in, uh, uh, in your narrative um, the entire project cost must not total more than uh, 10000 if the threshold was 5000 correct? So if they were getting in kind, there would still be a limit. You were, you were suggesting setting a limit. I, I was for a couple different reasons. One is I was afraid of the we get five and then they come in with a two hundred thousand dollar project that has huge impacts that we're not able to assess, right? Or five for twenty five, or five for thirty. And to me, it's a different ballpark in terms of what you're getting and how our money is being used and maybe potentially greater consequences. Um, and I also feel like that will, it's just easier to have a smaller universe in terms of what you're, what you're looking at. So if it was 2,500, it would be a total of 5,000. You know, there are all different ways to do it. I just want to get something out there again for people to consider. Maybe we don't have any limit on match, or maybe we say there's no matches at all. You just have to be able to implement the project on your own. I mean, ideally, that's what we're looking for. Here's the money. Go do it. And you know, I tried to emphasize that this is this is the one difference from in our criteria from the regular projects is we're not going to have an expectation that you do matching or a desire for that. This should be just standalone using the money. But I also was sensitive to the fact if we have a threshold and it's above twice the limit and people are going to spend the maternity trying to reach <coughs> that, they build their project larger and then they spend their time doing the fundraising and they don't reach that goal and we've set aside money and we've got projects that don't happen. So it's kind of, I don't want to get into that trap either. So it's just about setting expectations. Maybe we shouldn't be setting that expectation. I don't know. I'm not quite sure I understood what you said, so um, I'll, I'll respond sure. anyway. I think uh, having a cap on the total project cost speaks to it being a small project. You're not, you're not just trying to restrict it to a small request of proceeding. Mm -hmm. Pay funds, you're trying to restrict it to a small project, so it's something that you can easily get your head around, and it's speaking to a different applicant you've got a larger project, you got you got more ability to go through the whole process and you're more used to it and you got help and all that other stuff. So the, some kind of a limit on total project makes sense to me. And I don't think it, I, and I think requiring a match really distorts it if you're really just trying to help people be a source for doing some small thing that's in, and I think the other thing, there's a component that says you should have your match in hand. That, in the, that to me just goes to success of the program. I would hate to have five applicants come in, all of them saying I'm going to get a match of however much, and then the match never comes through, and then we have an unsuccessful program. And, but I can understand the flip side, it might be easier for them to get the cash from another donor if they've got our money in hand. And so there's a little bit of the chicken and the egg. So it's another decision point. This is more a comic than the way I think, but I have never thought of these as being matching. It's just like maybe I'm just naive, but I had always thought of them as being uh, not not us trying to leverage other funds because they are small. 
but I, I, I'm listening to you thinking, well, you might find somebody else to help fund you, but I, I don't want them out fundraising for small projects, really. I, I want to be the kind of project where you know, I, I like your list, signs, and that sort of thing. Um, I, I do, I don't want to sidetrack this, but there were two on your uh, not appropriate list that I want to make sure I understand. Um, one was feasibility studies and the other was design work. And the reason you're thinking that is because those are elements of a larger project and you just don't want to be, you know, half pregnant. You know, I mean, you don't want to get started in a project say we've spent money on it when really it's a big project that we're talking about, not a little one, right? Right, and so part of it's that is segmentation. Part of it is if you get in, what if the feasibility turns out that something's not feasible? Then we spent money on something that probably won't go to fruition anyway. Right. So right. I just wanted to, that, I, I like the list. I think it's very helpful to have. Here's the kinds of things we are thinking about. Here's the ones we're not. I think that's very helpful. I just wanted to make sure I remember. Yeah, I, I, the, I agree with Linda that it seems like to keep a small project, and as you mentioned, to keep the, uh, the impacts and the process of considering it limited, I would limit the total budget. And um, like Devin, I really, matching, if you're sophisticated enough to round up matching money, then you're probably not a person who's having a problem applying in our current procedure. Because that, again, I mean, I think of this as, I want $1,000. I pay myself $20 an hour to do this. So that means I've got 50 hours from start to finish to do the whole process. And if it takes me you know, a weekend day to educate myself in the process, that's eight hours gone. And if I'm on the phone rounding up 10 people to come, that's another you know, 10 hours gone. So I just think that um, if, they, if, they, if they have an in-kind match, great. You know, if they want to tell us that they're going to get a certain number of people, that's all part of public support. But I, I would think that these would be things that would go out. And again, like you said, if the whole point is to accomplish the project, then I wouldn't want it to be, you know, stopped by the fact that they only had this and they didn't have the other. So what's the solution? I mean, it sounds like at least some of us are feeling that way. Do we? It, it seems like we're in agreement that we want to cap on the amount that includes both the project and in kind. We don't want to force anyone to have to go to do in kind, but if they do have additional funding, we still want to cap on it. Mm -hmm. So if it's going to be 5000 that will include in kind as well as what we're funding, or if it's 2500 it would include in kind as well as we're I think that brings it back down to your original idea yeah. in some ways, and I think that's that's right. I yeah. agree. So we're not requiring any, but if they don't have it, it's, we're still putting money on, on the on the budget. It's just what we decide, whatever we decide. What, what about the the issue of do you have to if if your budget calls for an in kind, do you have to have it in hand? I don't think. What's your feeling about that? Um, I don't know. Does seem to complicate it. We don't have to make all decisions to make, correct? No. Throw it back. I, I think these are less. I'm, I'm inclined to say they don't have to have it. Um, it and and then they'll figure out how to pull off the project, and you know we'll deal with that. But I think um, I find it hard to think that the kinds of ideas I think we're going to have that they're going to even have a source to go to. Yeah. So it's, I'm expecting it all to come in as in-kind labor. And so whether we, I don't, I don't really want to pay people for that kind of project. I want them to donate their time, not have to think about costing it out like you just did. And we're buying supplies is what I hope. Right. That makes a lot of sense to me. So would it be fair to say that you would want your in-kind commitment time of the application if it's going to be services as opposed to in kind of donations. Right? X. I mean to me X they present X. they present evidence of a, a partner and if the partner sends a letter, right, if Florence Hardware sends a letter and says, We love this idea, we're gonna give them fifty gallons of paint. Right. I mean that's you know if they say I had a conversation with Florence Hardware, I mean again that would be 
I'm looking through application. If I see a letter, I you know give it a check plus. If they just had a phone conversation with Todd and he said he would give me a painting, it gets a check. And or if I think I can get this from a hardware store in town, I've talked to a few people that gets a check minus. You know, so it's sort of it would just be it's not necessary, and I would want them just to present you know present what they have. Um, So uh, we are not, so appearance not required. Agreed. Okay. Um, and that would be, so we would probably want to make that clear in the application that evidence of public support should be submitted in writing. So they can either you know, email Sarah or the chair or they can submit letters. Um, the, the type of Letters, or I'm sorry, type of letter, I have type here. Um, the type of projects. So, Dave obviously can, has given us a not. Can we just go back to yeah. taking the notes in terms of dollar amount mm -hmm. of the folks who we have to resolve that tonight? Um, I, got it. I like a smaller amount. I mean, I think 3000 is probably. Again, assuming that there's not going to be um, a lot of additional money, I think that 3000 is sufficient to invest some amount of time in. I know I've done grant applications for less. Um, again, it depends on how much money you have in hand. If, if $500 means a lot to you, then uh, so it's there. Move for a non-binding straw poll just to get a sense of we yeah. why we just put it in our reviews because I know Linda you said you might be thinking more as opposed to less. I would say the five thousand gives us a logical reason with the city but that should be the size of the project. I wouldn't say you know you can match it up to ten. I think five thousand is a project and hope we get things like that. Brian? Yeah five thousand you're gonna gamble with I will. 5,000 total project, including in kind if pay. Or you will must for that. Or is it 4999, sir? It's 4999. It's got to be under the five. David, thoughts? I support what Dave <coughs> wrote and with the amendments that we've, that we've uh, worked at tonight. I, I, um, I think it's hard to anticipate all the small kinds of projects that have come before us. I thought his the document that he worked out was sufficient to cover um, most of the contingencies that I could imagine, and I figure we were smart enough to work through the rest of them ad hoc. Uh, so uh, I, I support uh, Dave's plan. Linda, can I ask? No, yet. Is, is, there, is, there a, is there a minimum that should be? And people are asking for $150, just the paperwork involved is a pain in the ass, correct? I, I mean, for, for a project that would only be $150, it would mostly just be the committee's time, and then however many invoices are submitted. But I mean, is it worth it? I mean, do you want a minimum? I mean, is it, I, I would imagine. Her answer you know, is yes. No, I mean, I think it, it's kind of going to filter out the smaller projects. I, mean, I wouldn't fill up this application for $150. I can't imagine really anybody, but I think it might. It might take care of itself. If the committee's willing to consider a planning project, then that's not an issue for me. I honestly, I, I, I can't think of a compelling reason to limit it. I mean, again, if we were, if we had a stack this thick of projects for, you know, I need twelve fifty, you know, something, but. We don't have that. I mean, we have almost no projects, except most of our projects are from the city and city agencies. There's a handful from other sophisticated, you know, groups that do, you know, from housing groups that are in the business of getting grants. We just don't have the mom and pop application. So I would be, I'd be fine with getting, I'd be happy to get four or five applications for 150 if they were for good historic projects. Well, um, and just, just. Uh, speak for that. I mean, I'm doing a building plaque right now. It's $200. Yes, and that's exactly. Perfect. That right. would be the great thing to put here. You know, so. mm -hmm. yeah. And I asked for clarification from David, and I appreciate your kind words and support for what I've done. <coughs> in saying that you agree, 
I only said in certain number less than five thousand dollars. So you said I said in certain number less than five thousand. So what we're trying to figure out is is there a number you feel comfortable? What's with your this? number, Dave? Five thousand. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's what you five. want. I, uh, there, what for the total project or no. five thousand? No, no. You you potential? wrote that the total project itself should not be more than ten. Didn't you? As a as a max okay. yeah. in that range. And so that we're not, and, be, and you wrote that you were not in favor of the incrementalism of the, this, that these were, would be used as little tiny supplements to a much, much bigger thing. That was in here. And you, so you, uh, $5,000 and it shouldn't be part of, $5,000 shouldn't be the, the camel's nose. So, um, or the bear's claw in legal terms. Um, so, uh, if he's agreeing with you, he can't be any clearer. Five and ten. What am I supposed yeah. to say? I like what you wrote. Yeah. No, 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 I appreciate it. I just wrote those as the maximums that yeah. we had considered previously. I actually think it should be twenty-five hundred to five thousand to the project. Why did you write five thousand? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so I, mean, I, I support what you wrote, not what you said. So, Dave, even though we are penurious and miserly in, in the Great New England tradition. I think at least, at least amongst this group, we're being outvoted. So I would go with five and ten for now. Because they said five. Well, I heard said five. five. I said five. five. I, don't oh, know, you, I don't know if the ten does. I think we were saying five. Oh, you, five, want five. you want five. Yeah. So yeah. yours could so be up to five from us or any combination yeah. up to five. And I, yes. So if so they have right. a $4,500 project and they have $1,000 of in-kind services, they should not we would have given them four We would have considered that. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that's, you know, it's fun. You hit the margin, but that's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. Or we could not include I'm, in-kind services as a consideration. Just the total project cost would be cash. Because we want a bunch of people doing a bunch of stuff, but we don't necessarily want a giant dollar amount project. Well, I was just sticking to the framework. I say within the fact that we were trying to have them submit a budget, and if someone gave you, like, gave you a donation, so you're saying five over total. All right, our consensus falls apart, so we'll have to. We we'll can probably, visit it. We'll probably have to revisit it because we do have a wide divergence, as we, which is right. We had this before. We had a wide divergence. We had twenty thousand. So next meeting, expect a motion and a second, and a vote, and a nasty debate for the vote. All right, um, so no appearance. Type of projects, the list, um, and again, uh, we don't need to, we're not going to come to a decision tonight, but what I might suggest is, that you come to the next meeting with, well, what do people think about the list? Because again, we've gone back and forth on this, on if we put down the list, and that excludes everyone who doesn't see their project on the list, and if we don't put a list, then we get all sorts of projects that are ineligible and that we're clearly not going to be funded. So, um, can I, yeah, can we come in? Yep. We're, we're entrusted with the stewardship of these funds and we are then overseen in our responsibility by the council. And there's no way that we can vote unless we want to restrict ourselves, but technical legal perspective, we can't vote away our, 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 our judgment and our wisdom uh, to uh, make decisions. So and there are a lot of these, we can, we can come up with and spend hours and hours and hours talking about the, uh, the specific projects that we would look at, and then if if a project comes along that is of great interest to a number of us, we'll vote on it. I mean, but, but Dave, this is the thing about this is, at least from my perspective, this is an outward-looking criteria. This is not for this is not for us. But they're right? guidelines. This is yeah. not for us. But these are this is what do we want? Because this information is what is going to go to. We're imagining a unsophisticated first-time grant writer. So. Yeah, I'm not saying that we would limit ourselves necessarily. I'm just saying that we 
need to consider when we put this out there that does a person look through the list and say, I'm not on it, therefore I'm excluded. And so how exhaustive do we want to make it? And again, if the, lo the longer it gets, the more the person looks through the list and says, oh, there's like 30 different projects and I'm not there. Um, so that's, I guess the consideration is what level of instruction do we want to give to the applicant? I mean, we could just say, go look at the timetable, you know, go look at the uh, database at the CP, you know, the, the coalition, and if you look like that, you know, you're okay. But again, that level of navigation is probably going to be beyond them. So just looking at, you think, if you're envisioning your perfect small projects applicant, when they look at Dave's guidance, is it good or do you see for, you know, someone trying to do a historic plaque or, um, Maybe trying to you know trying to organize um, a commemoration. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's the problem is that if these examples are, are excellent, spoken from somebody who has awarded scores of small projects. I have not. I mean, but if you're talking about somebody coming in naively with just their hat in hand over a small project, I don't know that these, that they would understand the ramifications or implications of. of of, um, of, of the, the listed list, but I don't know if they ever would. And at some point, uh, I mean, um, they, if somebody insists on their on us considering their project rather than having it be uh, the staff's decision, then we're going to listen to it and we may check it out. But um, it ultimately, it's going to be because we just don't think they're worth the project. I, I think this is good only because if you don't if you don't include anything, then I, I think we're going to start to get calls for things that have absolutely nothing to do with this. Right. And we could include language. You know, as Sarah said, you know, the application or the, the, the plan should say consult Sarah. We say, you know, if you don't see your project on this list, please cons consult with Sarah to discuss whether or not what you're considering falls within the parameters of what the CPA can do. I might suggest that we, even though we don't use our criteria sheet of what kinds of things that we suggest they might look it over, because that would give them ideas for the kind, you know, kind of things we get to spend the money on. I mean, I think many applicants won't realize the constraints of the CPA, you know, state direction that says thou shall, mm -hmm. and so that's, you know, that's the only limitation within the categories you define. Yeah, so that application, I added in a provision at the very front that says familiarize yourself with these aspects of the plan directing them to those very specific things, which we could have as an appendix or we could include with yeah. it. But I think ultimately, maybe the first screen, if Sarah's up to it, is for them to, any applicant needs to meet with you before submitting something. Yeah, that's fine. You're not a voluntary thing, but a mandatory thing. So Conservation Commission, can't just walk into the meeting and say, "Here's my notice of intent." Right? I mean, they have to. Yeah. They have to have contact with staff. So, so we like say, it, it we just say you have to have contact with staff as part of the application process. Correct. We went through this already. Yeah. You and Sarah decide what. Yeah. You're the first one. I, right. I'd much yes. rather have my time wasted for ten or fifteen yeah. minutes and than to have everybody's time wasted for. Right. Well, I would just you know just have that staff. Staff check off. I, uh, I, I, I feel more comfortable with it because this is, we're interested with the decision that if Sarah's, Sarah's guidance be regarded as that, that if, if an applicant insists on their small project being considered by us, then then they it, it puts Sarah in an untenable position to be a, a, a someone who forbids us from considering it. But we should, in that case, listen to even. The most unlikely. Well, uh, I, unless it, what if something is system. ineligible? But we never do that. Like, we never do what? We, it always runs. All projects always run through Sarah. Like the, everything. For an example, um, the senior center called and they wanted to buy a van. That's great. It's not eligible for CPA. And, and, and I just well, told no, okay. no, you, you can't no. apply. That doesn't meet yeah. any of the CPA criteria. Okay. Well, I'm questioning why we need to. Um, shrink the size of the universe at all. And we don't know what, who, who will apply. Why should we limit what they 
can apply for? What is the rationale? For that? Well, it only limits them from small grants, not for applying for CPA funds. Right. So we totally even for the small grants. Get salaries and cost overruns and soft costs but in, a, in a regular application, but it's not as as a small grant. So the so a question. Or I mean, that was the thinking. Yeah, so I mean, one question is why limit it at all? Well, so if you look at that chart, the acquisition, acquiring any property is so entailed in terms of, you know, one, you've got three year early MBA to buy a property for $5,000, historic or, you know, recreational or what have you. Two, you know, if it's the municipality doing that, they have a conservation fund to cover soft costs, do all of the things. So this is aimed at one, keeping the planning department coming in from applying for soft costs anytime. And we, we now have a process for filling up the conservation fund for doing that for other applications for large acquisitions. Any of these other ones for housing, recreation, or historic, one would be over 5,000, two, because of the restrictions that go on it and the need to secure third parties, which cost you know, $15,000 to hold the conservation easement. It's all going to be much more complicated. So, and we are letting. Why not let the applicant decide that? I mean, what? Because our our intent is to open this up to projects that we have even that we can't even visualize because they haven't applied. Could we not begin at least by not limiting the universe and see what comes up? I mean, that's one one option. I mean, I think that for someone to go into a contract with the city, they've got to have advice, they, you know, something that, that was my, I, I liked it for that. I mean, I, the only <coughs> way to do it is I looked at 500 small projects, I looked at the applications, I looked at stuff, and I looked at the stuff that was $10,000, I looked at the stuff that was 15000 I looked at the stuff that was $20,000 all over the state, and the level of complexity and the level of discussion. Part of this is so that we have a streamlined process and can do it in, in potentially one meeting and make it easy. And for these types of things, you know, preservation and preservation guarantees that come with it and the types of questions that we asked Forbes about, you know, the windows and the questions that we asked about the Secretary of Interior standards and complying, you know, is the small grant person who's going to come in for that going to be knowledgeable about those things? Those are the types of discussions they need to be having with Sarah up front. And to me, those are the types that we should have as part of the full round. These should be standalone, easy projects. So I try to gauge it in terms of food. And certainly, there are things that fall out the, the list of things that we might consider. But the types of things that I try to exclude, I feel like those are all the big tip up items that wrap us around the axle when we actually discuss them. Is this the segmentation of a project? Is it going to be coming back to us? Is this going to have enough butter? Do they have the people in the neighborhood who are going to be pissed about this? Are we going to draw a lot of public criticism? How is it going to look? And then the questions about uh, if we look at the list in terms of do we want to spend this much amount of money on feasibility? <coughs> do we want to do the design work not to know where it's going to come back? And is it going to come back? Do we want to be paying someone's salary? And so all of those things are, those are the big questions that we talk a lot about around the circle. And if we can't resolve those during our meetings, it's going to be hard for an applicant trying to do it on the short without follow-up to do it in an application. And I agree with all that. But I guess if our intent is to empower applicants in ways that we can't visualize because we don't know who's applying, why not initially broaden the universe by not um, creating these things? It's, it's, it's one option. I mean, I think you've done a, a good job here. I mean, I still have questions about that. The, the devil's advocate answer to you is if, if we didn't put a, a limit on it, like what, you're, what I think you're saying is why put the 5,000 limit on it at all? No, 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 no. I'm saying the program. The program oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. no, I'm saying definitely have a 5,000 model limit. I'm saying, but why why not allow anything legal under CPC to apply? Ah, I see. Oh, I, I definitely have five. Oh, I think it's the, I, I, I am with Dave in that when you look over the list, I don't know what you would do for $5,000. Well, no, and I, I don't either, which is okay. why we probably we won't get them. Okay. But we don't know what's out there. 
Well, I mean, I, I think we know the universe of things that are out there that people yes. might be interested in. Yeah, I okay. feel like it's reasonable to say here are things that we're gauging. But I also don't want someone spinning their wheels applying for something that we know is going to require a lot more work for someone who's uninitiated with the project and then have to realize after talking to her, I got to do this and I got to do this and then they try to do that and that's much more complicated. If we know that that complexity is there, let's make it easy so that the applications are successful and people don't walk away saying, well, that was some <coughs> process that stopped because yeah. I couldn't get anywhere with it. That's what I'm concerned about is let's get let's develop some success and if we see that we can expand these in terms of categories, maybe we do that. But I'd rather start small. But I, I understand, and you aren't the only person to voice that concern, and that's where I had difficulty trying to figure out what these, what these categories are. For, so under your thing, for uh, recreation, what, what does create and acquire mean? And I'm looking at the very last page in the chart. Like if, if, if a, a parent-teacher organization came and said, we want a new, very small play structure in addition to the existing stuff we funded at Bridge Street or Jackson Street or whatever. Um, is that acquire or create recreation? So if it's $2,000 to build a, a tiny little climbing structure, What, what is that and why wouldn't that be something good to fund? And is that create or acquire? Uh, it's rehabilitation and restoration of an existing recreation. Oh, I see. So a rehabilitation would be buying a new piece of playground equipment would then be allowed. Right. And that's but buying we, land to make a new park. I see. To put that on. So I wonder if we could put that in the in the short list then. Yeah, and I actually had a list of additional things that I thought of during the day. So what I heard here. Um, benches, bleachers, recreational amenities, play sets, and other things that you okay. couldn't think of because I realized I should change that category. Uh, but yeah, so that is that. so that is allowed. Oh, so yeah, yeah, memorial benches and you know, things like that. But you know, the, the challenge is in each of your, I mean, some of you are here from particular boards, you know what types of projects you may see. So, I mean, this is from my experience and my research, but there may be other things to put on here that we basically expand that potential universe. <coughs> and, and, and maybe we could just include language that says, you know, we, I mean, I have here it says it's not an exhaustive list. We can also say, feel free to use your imagination and, you know, ground truth it with Sarah if you have something else that you're considering. Yes, I think that's good. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think that we will have um, further discussion on this because there is there, there is some divergence. I mean, this is, we've come to this before, whereas, you know, blow it wide open so that we have encourage everyone to come in and, um, or do we give some guidance and then also restrict it. And, and you've done a great job and pretty good at something for us to, uh, to look at. Um, thank you. I predict we'll vote it in next meeting. Yes, I would hope so. I hope so. Um, the, the last uh, two items I have are the timetable for applications, which um, Dave was suggesting at the beginning. Um, Brian was saying if the, so the timetable for applications is one element, and the timetable for a presentation to council is another element. So if we want, if we're comfortable bringing it to council as a separate package of recommendations, then we could do it up front, consider it <coughs> at the first meeting, and then bring it to council from there. And then that would solve the difficulty that Brian had, which makes a lot of sense, which is that you have an applicant who's just applying for $500 They've got all their volunteers are really excited right now. And now they have to sit for more than four months because usually it's another number of days, 90 days before the it all rolls through the city. So, Linda. Um, I, I like Brian's suggestion a lot because what that would allow you to do is both shorten the time 
and allow you to consider these in conjunction with the larger projects. And I find it a little hard to consider the small projects without knowing how much you're going to want to put into the large projects. <coughs> to come in towards the end of the process, um, I'm not quite sure how to make that work, but, some, but so, somehow to have them come in towards the end of the process so then the consideration could be of all of the projects. I feel, I, I agree with the rationale, but I think the reality is at the end of our rounds is we're trying to figure out the big projects. We're pressed to think about conditions. We're pressed to think about money. We're pressed to get our recommendations in on those. I don't know how we then consider these small ones and feel like we've given them the space and the time that they deserve. So, I mean, I, one alternative would be, and it doesn't address your concern, but if we want to make the recommendation to the council at the end all together that we do a final vote at that first meeting period and they hold that they get wrapped in at the end so they know that the recommendation will go mm -hmm. at least have that and you say but it's up to the council and they get four months <coughs> i don't know how to, to fix that part about the money other than maybe reserving the fund up front which is i like that idea you know we said it each round we just set aside 20 grand. We say this is what we have available for small grants, and that's it. And if we have anything left over, it gets rolled into the round. And that's one way to do it. Mm -hmm. If it's wildly successful, we can figure out another way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Last to think about. I'm not, any of these sound fine to me as far as the process. I think there are pros and cons either way. My suggestion of consider them up front and, and decide about them, but then batch them all together to the council was sort of a not creating a whole separate process. I do think people will be frustrated being delayed getting the money to start the project, but you know, your example of the clerk, you know, they'd be happy to get the $2,000 worth of archival envelopes four months later when they can get to it. I mean, you know, many of these projects are not time critical that, that I envision. So the excitement of knowing about it, I'm actually not inclined to want to set aside a small project's budget. I'd like to just see what comes in in the beginning for small projects. I'd, I'd probably lean towards small projects instead of continuing to fund city capital improvements, delayed and deferred maintenance kind of thing. So I'm not wanting a, budget, a limit on it. And I, I'd be happy to send it over to the council <coughs> if that's what you all want to do. So. I, I can't, from an administrative point of view, um, we're going to have to talk about all of these small projects at an open meeting and make a decision on them with a vote, motion, discussion, all that stuff. So I'm, like Dave's, not seeing where we have, you know, where's that short meeting in the last three, four meetings in our cycle where we're going to have, just imagine tacking two and a half hours on you know, if we have 15 applications and we spend 20 minutes or 10 minutes on each one, that's 150 minutes. So that, to me, seems hard to do administratively. Um, and I see a virtue in that, again, part of this is to make the community aware that if you fold, the headline's always going to be about the biggest product. The headline's always going to be the last part of the foreign students. At the bottom, they will have a list of the amounts, or they'll maybe they'll just say, and $20,000 was awarded for small projects. Whereas at least if we do it separately at a separate meeting for small projects, then that's a separate story in the paper. And, that's, and also that's a separate picture that we're bringing to council, which is you know, not just the same applicants who are doing projects that are very similar to the projects that they did six months ago. So from that perspective, I think it would be um, useful as an educational tool to do it separately, to do it in a separate meeting, and do it up front. I'm just waiting. So. Or it's, it's all theoretical until we, so we're, we're all right. just trying to guess what is likely to happen. Right. So Except I, I know the, the, two, the two and a half hour part <laughs> is not. <laughs> okay. so no, that, I, that I know. So that was a my way of saying, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with, with doing it, trying it, doing it up front, and making the decision, taking the city council 
and see how it goes. And if it ends up being a mistake, then you correct it. Our our process for expedited proposals. Do, does the client, does the applicant have to come in and speak to us? Do they have to? Mm -hmm. Okay. Could the small grant also be an ex? Is there go fit into the expedited process? That might open the door. We don't want to open. At every meeting, we'd be talking about somebody wanting five hundred dollars to do something. Correct. <laughs> no, that would be a problem. <laughs> Maybe you will qualify. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm still just wondering about that small thing. It comes up, oh my God, we need Phragmites now or something now. Um, then they put it in expedited and we deal with that. Well, they can't. I mean, anybody can put in for any amount expedited. expedited. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. not restricted. So they still, right, if there was some invasive that you that. knocked out now and you need $1,000, then they'd be free to they do it. They just go right through the expedited. Um, so that's the that's my list, Dave. Do you have other? Uh, so two other small issues. <coughs> Question of we talked about it the last time whether or not we wanted to do this once a year or we right. wanted to do it for each round, and I think there was a split on that to some degree as well. So worth revisiting. I would say definitely each round. Yes. Uh, if, if, if we're trying to make this, trying to encourage applicants, why would we only do it once a year? Our goal is to encourage small applicants. And by reducing hurdles, we are doing it. So once a year is just making seats owners. Books. Agree. Two works for me. I agree. I think our constituency was different. All right, and then the other question was, uh, do we want these projects to be completed in a shorter number of years than the traditional three? You want to be a one-year project, two-year project, or just stick with what everyone else has? I think they likely will be, but I don't see changing the rule to make it happen. I agree. And you know, Dave, all these questions and, and, and discussion, notwithstanding, I, I think we're really almost. I mean, I think we've got. We know what we're going to do. Really, I'm, I'm encouraged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we all care about this, and mm -hmm. I think it be a good thing. I think the challenge for all of us is marketing. That we feel comfortable with what we've got, so that we can go out and encourage people to think creatively about what they might do. And so uh, once we get this done, I'll enlist someone to help me with some marketing materials developing those. So thank you for all staying and discussing this stuff. All right, thank you, Dave. That was very useful, I think. Um, and so we have a lot of things that we seem to have hashed out, and then we're going to argue next time about our list of topics. <coughs> Not argue. Not discuss. Not argue. We don't argue. Arguendo. Um, so, uh, the next thing is to begin the community preservation plan update, and um, I would say that we are at the point of reading the plan. Um, do we wish to assign people to the various program areas? Obviously, those of us who come from a board that is tasked with a program area don't have any choice. Um, but for those of you who are elected representatives or appointed representatives, which is y'all, um, do you have a particular program area that's near and dear to your heart that you would like to work on? So I can pass it on, on my list of who's assigned to what. Other than Dave, I was hoping that Tony would be here from the house. <laughs> Authority, she's right. like on the housing. I mean, I, yeah, my interest is housing, That's but housing. she's on. She, someone needs to reach out to the housing partnership, right? And she's on it, right? And uh, it's on the housing authority board, so. So, you like to, I mean, we've assigned more than one person to so sure. So, okay, Good. Good. Oh. you know, um, you did the right I did recreation time. last time. Part of me feels like we've had a lot of changes in recreation in terms of what's been funded. So, 
that needs some substantial revision, but I also feel like it would be in my interest to do something different. Okay. But I'm not sure if I have a recommendation why I can let you know. Do you have a control that you can? I don't know if it's You guys want to swap? You can do recreation, you can do open space. Oh. Variety is the spice of life. Mm -hmm. He hasn't trust me with open space. Dave, you've got historic. <laughs> I will work with the historical commission so that they, this is not one person's right. piece of advice. We all want to get their entire uh, suggestions and, and, and bring it before you. Can I ask what the process has been to, what should I be doing as I, you know, I have um, opinion, So the process is to go to the, go to the section um, and read it and then compare it to past practice and adjust it if necessary. And then if it needs to be, you know, basically amend it to match past practice. And if there are, um, if the needs and goals need to be revised, then they'd be revised. I mean, that's the kind of thing where in housing, obviously if projects have been approved, then needs and goals might be changed. Like that, that's something where that's usually done from the housing partnership as far as their mm -hmm. assessment of what mm -hmm. needs to be done in the next five years. Mm -hmm. So if we've been unusually successful in building housing for one particular segment, but family housing is not there that we might adjust it. And I know that you know we have discussions about an open space. If we've done a particular, particularly good job protecting undeveloped land out in Ward Six and Seven, but we haven't done a particularly good job, you know, making pocket parks and green spaces available, then we would try to adjust the emphasis in the open space section. So the the statute talks about public. Hearing. Is that just for the initial plan, or is there some process for amending the plan? Well, so what we've typically done is we have um, we have done our best to put the information in the plan, and then we have a public hearing, which they envisioned as receiving basically more you know more information from the, the general public, not necessarily the groups that are working within those fields, and I think we. have not had very many people participate at that point. So, yeah. so it's not it's not clear, you know, it's not even clear when you read the statute that they expect you to do this over and over again. Yeah, it's not right. It, it says you shall do this when you first start but that yeah. like, we decided to amend it. So that has been the procedure in the past. And one of the challenges is when looking at these sections is you know you look at what some other challenges do and they're very specific about their goals and objectives. They actually say, you know, to do this project, this project, this project, this project in this order. Whereas ours tends to be a little bit more holistic, broad in terms of aspirations. We want more open space. We want to protect wetlands. We want to invest. Or we rely on other plans. Mm -hmm. The challenge, I think, for a lot of us is in being general and relying on plans. Are those plans up to date? Is there more information? Have we met those targets? Do we meet those goals? Or do we want to be heading now that we've met a lot of these targets, thinking about specific things that the community wants to the community to figure out what are those types of projects? Mm -hmm. I don't think that we've identified projects before, but certainly. Mm -hmm. and I mean, what's, the, what's the degree of public input that's required for the revision of the um, preservation plan? Uh, it's just it says you'll hold a public hearing, but it doesn't go any further than that. So we'll draft. So we draft, we draft revisions and then we know, you know, give notice that we're going to have a public hearing on the plan and if, if the public came in and told us that what we were, our revisions were off from their perception, then we would adjust it, but it technically hasn't happened, so. But that hearing is just, we name one of these meetings again. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thoughts on? It's been a legal act, but the only thing we need to Who actually got four covered? How about if I just read the whole thing? Okay. Who actually did the um, production of this? I just wanted to compliment somebody because it's Is just it the binding or the the, the whole the whole the clip. Uh, <laughs> the, no, the clip is mine. The person that I want to <laughs> give the yeah. most credit to is Jack, um, the first chair. The yeah, the Jack prettiness Warner. of it though. The oh, the prettiness. You all, I thought you were saying. Cool. I, well, the content the verbiage. too. I was both, both. It's, I, it's, has it, I, is it been upgraded over time? I don't think it was that pretty at first. 
No. Uh, okay. We had an Brian. intern who was really great and making stuff pretty, okay. and I said, "Hey, it's pretty," and she did. And she, did she did a great job. She did. But I don't know how to do it again because oh. the file got corrupted, so we're starting from scratch. Oh, <laughs> the green file is gone. Uh, as time goes by, the plan will revert to Garamond Gold. <laughs> <laughs> more and more. Yes. Um, so yeah. in the past, now we we've all reviewed all the chapters. Yeah. So you're gonna do that again. Right. So so again. Your particular emphasis on gathering information, but then everybody has participated in the, you know, in the process of right, decision making process, whether it's expedited, whether it's um, the sort of general outline of the way things are supposed to work. And again, if it doesn't match up or it doesn't provide information that you think would an applicant or the public should have, then we can. But since we just changed it yesterday. Taking suggestions now, or are you in the eye that it's nine o'clock? So or are you heading back? For, after nine. for things to consider as we do the general plan. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, a small list. Maybe we should do Just for people to consider, if you're going to be reading the list, we should alert. Applicants that we may want them to, once their project is complete, be available to give a presentation on their project, whether it's before us or a larger group. So I know that's a, something we're considering. Um, include the firm interpretation of what the majority vote is so that future groups will not have the same continuing difficulty over that issue. And if we need something to substantiate it, make sure that we have that either from DOR or from the Cynthia Coalition. Um, include, I don't know if we have, we have a draft of the contract as an appendix so that applicants know that this may be what's expected if they go over a certain dollar amount. Now that we have a template, it might be nice to let them know about this provision about signing on tax liability and those types of things. Um, and then, you know, I thought, given that we had a, a number of projects in the last couple of rounds that had options and expedited review, um, that we have some kind of provision that says if your expedited review is time sensitive because of the nature of agreements you've made with the potential seller, we'd like to see that option and verify whether or not you have the ability to extend. I would like to have the grant document if our money is a local match. So for instance, we had the park grant and we did the award letter and the grant application never made it into the package. So and I got questions about that. So uh, maybe if, if we are a local match, for, especially for you know, a large program like land grant or park grant, that we would get the award letter so we would know exactly exactly the deadlines we wouldn't have to play telephone going through the application. Right. I noticed you were taking notes, but that's something that I like that list I would want in the minutes. That's you know, those are all sort of things for us to keep an eye on in the future. Can you just send me that? Yay, thank you. Yeah, but I think that's what that's the one there. Yeah. All right. Can I ask about the staff so we talked about in the past. Yes. They were, the, the project on uh, the nursing home low, uh, low and moderate income project on on Hill. Hill. Is that ongoing? Is that viable? Do you they have groundbreaking? It's under construction. Yeah, they're on the way. Built. Yeah. Halfway built. Oh, okay. I need to go there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, All right. They are going. They got their money. And Good. In fact, I saw somewhere that they're building another one. The same group is building another. And I think they built Dalton it Town. Yeah, yeah. The, state, the state school. So. But it, because of, of recent things that have been in the news, like the, um, uh, that looked like they were going to possibly go south, but, but didn't, um, 
I do sometimes wonder whether we have adequate protection for our um, our contributions to some big projects. When you look, look at the cottage street thing in East Hampton that, that has been having real problems with opening recently, or the um, uh, the, the little scare on on um, Round Hill um, about whether that was continuing. Granted, we weren't funding that, but um, that was absolutely misinformation. What? That was misinformation. That there was, I mean, that that was pretty well put to bed pretty quickly. I just, I just want to make sure that if, as we do fund some very large projects, sometimes I just want to make sure that we're we're covering our, our um, the, the city's interest. Um, and we, that would somehow be recoverable. We generally have so many contingencies and benchmarks that we require before actually mm -hmm. handing over the money that yeah. it doesn't come up. Even for the Christopher Heights project, they don't have to do something. Yeah, for such a small amount of total. And we've never really been burned. Is that true, sir? Uh, have we ever had an unsuccessful project? That we have funded and then the only things that happen are sometimes projects just don't happen. Oh, the, right. the tree census project never happened, but they never spend any money. Right. Um, so there, there are a few like that, but we've never been part of an unsuccessful project where we actually contributed money. First church in this track saw their window. So that's. <laughs> Is that they still? Are they still? Um, I, have, just, yeah, I haven't heard any update, but. That would be an example. That would be an example. Yeah. But, so, yes. Is there a second? That's kind of debatable, so I'm going to say is there sufficient vote? Without objection. The next thing is when.